Hello, I went with Vine Skills, and in this video, I want to teach you guys how to use the statuses in Lead Docket. Um, so let's look at our Lead Docket statuses. I, I like to think of them as this big conveyor belt in Lead Docket where opportunities comes into the process and they're going to be put in certain boxes, right? They're going to go into a certain one belt on this conveyor belt that is the assign or the chase or the under review or the pending sign up. There are 11 statuses in Lead Doc and each status is, is really important to understand what do they mean and how to use them. For each firm, it's worth thinking about your own processes. It really depends on the firm's processes, how you're gonna use each one of these statuses. They're fairly flexible. They're highly customizable on the back end and you can really uh, use the statuses that make sense for your own firm. So what I wanna do in this video is cover the 11 statuses and talk a little bit about how they are intended to be used by default and how you can customize them. So I wanna start actually by in your lead docket, uh, in any lead docket, you have a wealth of resources right here on the resource center. So I wanna take you there, and this is actually super helpful because you're gonna see a cheat sheet for statuses. So here on the help center, if you type in status, you will see here lead statuses. I wanna pull this up because look at this. You have a table in here that I recommend you print this out, uh, have a cheat sheet or even copy it in a document for you guys. Uh, our training document from Vine Skills has this, this, this uh, table. So you may have it from us in there. Now, let's look at it, right? So you see here, here are the statuses. There are 11 statuses in Lead Docket. Um, some of them are very common and very, you know, powerful. And here's the definition of each one of them. And these are the default tasks that Lead Docket has set up already by default in your system. Again, these are all super customizable, so we can change the tasks. You cannot change the statuses, by the way. At this point, um, the statuses are fixed. That's something that might be in their roadmap, that might be coming down the road, but uh, when we are recording this video, these statuses are still uh, fixed. All right, I wanna cover a few of them and tell you a little bit about the scenarios where you wanna use them. So. Assign status, that is a classical scenario when you want to assign this lead for somebody else to take a look at it. Either make a decision uh, or talk to the lead or look into the notes that you have and tell you what to do with that lead. The assign status is in lead docket. So if I go into uh, a lead in my dashboard and let's say I'm creating a new lead right here and I put this lead under assigned, right? At the very bottom of my lead, there are these lead statuses. And when I'm creating a lead, I'm gonna put it on a certain status. If I put this under assigned, usually the attorney is gonna be a required field. You can edit that, by the way, that's customizable. So we change that often depending on the processes. But let's say I'm gonna def determine the attorney here is gonna be Jake. When I save this lead right here, automatically Jake is gonna get a notification email. Uh, by default, it's gonna get an email that's going to say, you have a new lead assigned to you. By default also, if you look at here, it says um, the intake staff uh, will get a task to follow up with the attorney if the status doesn't change after 30 minutes. I think this is awfully short, in my opinion. Uh, uh, just from experience, this should be more like five hours, six hours, or 24 hours. So you give the attorney some time to review this. But then the attorney gets an email and the intake staff also gets a task to follow up with that attorney after that uh, recommendation. And this is a lot of how Lead Docket works. Lead Docket uh, has this idea of creating some safety nets to prevent that lead from not going anywhere and sitting in a status without nothing happening. So Lead Docket is gonna often have this ability where you have a uh, task that's set up to prevent that lead from sitting there too long. So that's how a sign is uh, used. Let me cover a few other ones in here. I may not go through all the 11 ones, you can kind of read it here and make some sense of it, but let me cover a few of the other important ones. The chase is a super important one 
the chase status, when you put a lead under chase here, um, and I may just do that right now with us. Uh, so let me see if I have, this is my phone number actually. This is a, a test lead from our system. I'm gonna go ahead and, and put a lead in chase, or better, let me pull up a lead that is already in chase, right? And you can see all these boxes on your intake dashboard are the actual statuses assigned to this. Chase is supposed to be used for every lead that you can get a hold of for whatever reason. So I came in here, I called Jake, and he didn't answer the phone. Now this lead auto should be put under Chase status. Okay, so I come in here and change the status. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Chase. When I pick Chase, automatically the first attempt is set up in here. I'm gonna go ahead and save the changes. So when I save these changes, the lead will get automatically a text message and an email that are sent to them saying something like, hey, we're trying to call you, please call us back, right? That's by default here in Lead Docker. So you're gonna see uh, the lead, uh, there we go, leads are gonna contact and have not heard back. Um, it doesn't say here, but actually the lead gets a text and, and an email saying, please call us back. And then the intake will have a follow-up task every four hours to continue the chase. The way that this is configured is in the back end, it's going to say, Ivan, you are doing this intake. After four hours here in my tasks, I have a task four hours from now that's gonna say continue the chase, which means I'm gonna call Jake again and try to talk to him. If he doesn't answer again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in there and put him in chase again and now it's gonna say second attempt, and I hit save. So when I hit save, again, four hours from now, I'm gonna get another uh, message saying continue this chase all the way until the, I believe, fifth attempt that is in here, right? So it goes fourth, and then the final one is the fifth attempt. That's the uh, continued attempt here on Lead Docket. So the idea is that Lead Docket by default tells you to call a lead every four hours for five calls. After that's done, then you would mark this lead as a lost lead, right? That's the how Lead Docket understands the processes of a chase lead. Now, again, this is customizable. You will be able to uh, change those time frames, change the attempts. Uh, all of that is done in the back end uh, of your Lead Docket. So it is customizable in that sense. But Chase is a super powerful um, status and that allows you, so every time I make that call, Lead Docket sends them a text message in an email that is configured right here under my message templates. See, each one of my Chase attempts, there's a text and there's an email that goes out with it. And they have a slightly different wording and you're able to see what this here, see how this one says, do you still need a lawyer? Reply yes and we'll call you shortly, right? Um, really different uh, language to get your lead to call you back, okay? So it's it's super powerful to do that, to use that chase status for the leads that you're chasing and trying to get a hold of. Once I did call Jake and let's say I got him on the phone, great. Then now I'm gonna change his status to whatever other statuses I want. Now let me show you a couple of other ones, right? So uh, on hold, it's a status that is it's tricky to be used. It's really for leads that are that are gonna sit there for a while and you can't do anything with them on, on for a while. So see, uh, it's gonna take several months to decide on. Social security is a really good case. Sometimes uh, bankruptcy can, you know, can take a while <clears throat> for you to decide on. Now the only task that happens is for your intake team to follow up 30 days later. So you don't wanna use hold if it's something that you're waiting for a police report, right? That you may get two or three days later. The hold is for longer time frames, right? You wanna sit there and let that lead sit there for several days. It's a, it's a tricky status to use. You wanna be careful with using this too much and end up with several leads on a big, you know, just holding there for months. I, I don't recommend that. Um, under review is another uh, helpful and useful one. And this is, uh, this is designed to be for leads that are waiting on certain information, like the police report that I just mentioned, right? So this will be a lead that you put under review. 
by default, your intake staff gets a notification to follow up 14 days later. I kind of feel this is a little bit too, lo too long. We often uh, set something for our clients that are a little bit more customizable. That's like a five day and then a 10 day and then a, maybe a 14 day follow up, right? So it can, it can have several of them in there. All right, so the idea is then I got that lead I wanna put on the, one of these statuses. Another really powerful one is scheduled. Let me show you what scheduled looks like. Uh, the scheduled status under here is going to allow me to schedule a certain time for that lead to talk to somebody. By default, it's talk to the attorney, right? So by default, lead docket understands that you're gonna schedule this lead to talk to the attorney. So I'm gonna pick the attorney and that's going to be, uh, the attorney's gonna get a notification as well and they can get a calendar invite and, and all that. It can be the attorney, but it can also be any other role. It can be the paralegal, it can be the investigator or even the intake person. So we can customize that. By default is the attorney. You're gonna pick a date. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna call uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. or 4.30, right? This is, the, this is the scheduled date. I can pick the appointment location. If it is, a, if it is actually a, a lead that you wanted to bring to your office, you can actually click on your office. Our Vine Skills office is in the world. It doesn't really have an address, but you can also just say, this is gonna be a phone call, okay? So here you go, I can go ahead and save this lead. When I do that, um, a few things are gonna happen is my attorney will get an email. Ashley Jordan uh, should have received an email that sent out to her saying, uh, you have a new uh, scheduled call. I gotta let her know that <laughs> this is just a test. So see, she got an email that says you got a new client meeting scheduled and she gets actually a cal calendar invite that goes directly into her calendar, I can put something in there as well. Now the lead themselves also gets a message that's automatically set up by Lead Docket in here that will tell them, hey, you have a new appointment. Uh, it's going to remind them on the day of the appointment at 8 a.m. by default it's gonna remind them at 5 p.m. the day before and at 8 a.m. on the day of the appointment. So if I go here under my scheduled status, these are the messages that are gonna go out. And see, you have a appointment here, reminder on the morning of the appointment and then on the day before the appointment at 5 p.m. That's what it's scheduled by default. We like to do it for our clients. I will say it's add another reminder one hour before the call that has instructions on how to do the call. If it's a like a Zoom meeting or a, team, a Microsoft Teams meeting, we do that as well. So we can you, you can configure that on the on the back end. So that's uh, that's schedule, right? So I mean, I'm covering several scenarios in this video, but you can kind of think about what I'm talking about in terms of what's the functionality of each status and tailor it to your firm's processes and think about how will your intake team use each one of these statuses. Consistency is really important. So I suggest sometimes for our clients, we'll create a, a workflow like this, right? So that's a process a flow chart where you can tell them these are the scenarios and these are the, these are the statuses that you're going to use and what happens after that status. So this is, a, this is something that we often configure for our clients, but it can also be just a document uh, where you can literally do a table just like this and write down for your team, what does a sign mean for you? When do you put a lead in chase? When do you use it under review and all that? I, I highly recommend you to have a little bit of a documented process for your team to, have, to be consistent about using all of these statuses, okay? That's it, I'm not gonna cover all of them, otherwise this video is gonna be too long and boring. Um, some of them are self-explanatory uh, and you will get, you can go through these um, table in here and maybe have a better uh, sense of them. All right, I hope that helps and if any questions, always uh, reach out to Vine Skills anytime.